Good day, Bahamas, and welcome to Tech Edge, a program that promises to be a game changer not only on the island of Grand Bahama, but also in the country. It is the future of technology and innovation, spearheaded by none other than the Grand Bahama Port Authority. Today, I have with me the president of the Grand Bahama Port Authority, Mr. Ian Roll. I also have the chief investment officer, Mr. Derek Newbold, and CEO of Quest, Mr. Daniel Fricker. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you very much. How are you doing today? Oh, doing awesome. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. So, Mr. Roll, tell me more about Tech Edge. What is it and how does it contribute to Grand Bahama? Well, a part of the port's vision um, entails, and along with the government, entails the development of an innovation and tech hub on the island of Grand Bahama. Now, in order to achieve that, we realize that you have to develop your people, right, in conjunction with also bringing these tech companies here. Because a lot of the tech companies, one of the first things they ask you, do you have any local talent that exists there? So yes, the idea is to bring persons in country, but also to develop our very own and what we feel is a very lucrative space. So um, we, I think it's very important, or we think it's very important to focus on the development of our people. And, and we then partnered with uh, entities such as Quest and the University of the Bahamas to help us achieve this feat. Amazing work. What motivated the port, though, to create such a program? Yes, yeah, so um, we first looked at how can we increase the population in Grand Bahama to create critical mass. And, and do it in a meaningful way that's not offensive to Bahamians, but inclusive, right? So the, the tech space actually allows us to bring persons in and have knowledge transferred to Bahamians, but at the same time, we also bring companies like the Quest to upskill persons who have interest in this particular area. We feel that uh, we could attract hundreds of persons here if we also have local talent. Because most of these companies, most of the tech giants, they want to know, do you also have local talent? So the idea is, how do we also grow the population in a most meaningful way? And that's part of our focus in regards to the technology sector. And of course, you know, technology is within our everyday lives. Correct. And so everyone may think, hey, I can be a part of this program. Can everyone be a part of this program? This program is not for everyone. First of all, you have to have a passion, not necessarily a PhD or even a bachelor's degree because a lot of persons who've done very well in terms of creating apps, etc., they aren't necessarily college graduates, but you have to have a passion for it. And Quest could probably speak more to the vetting process that one would have to go through in order to determine if someone has the criteria to go through this program. Why do you think Grand Bahamians should care for this program? I mean, like I said, technology is in everyday lives. Why do you think they should care about this? Well, I think for the Bahamas, we always concern about the employment numbers, right? Unless our employment numbers are 5%, unemployment rate, 5% or less. I think we always should be concerned about how do we get employment for our population. So persons in Grand Bahamas should be concerned or welcome this, I should say because we are now going to make a dent in an unemployment number, right? And also, they should also um, uh, be aware and be happy to know that b getting Bahamians more involved in this sector also means higher salaries, because there's great demand in this particular area around the world. And you don't have to relocate in a lot of cases in order to participate in this space. And speaking of having persons involved, Mr. Newbold, how do you plan to involve industry stakeholders in all of this? Of course, the port has a lot of licensees. And so how do you plan to include them uh, after the persons would have gone through that 12-week training? Well, the way this program is structured is really for us to sort of redefine our jurisdiction as an attractive jurisdiction for those types of companies that are looking for nearshoring opportunities. And when I say nearshoring, I'm talking about companies that may be based in North America, US, Canada, that are looking to take advantage of a near shore location like Freeport. And that would be setting up a facility here where you have talent, you place um, employees here who are able to service some of your needs, or you can outsource 
some of the services that you're looking for and just have it placed here um, near shore in, in one of the companies that are able to facilitate your needs. Um, for companies that are based here, well, certainly once persons would have gone through that training, they will also be able to take advantage of some of the skilled labor once they have available opportunities for some of these people who go through these opportunities. Yeah. But why is the development of a technology and innovation sector so important for the island of Grand Bahama and by extension the Commonwealth? It's important because we talk about diversification and we need to decrease our reliance on tourism. And Freeport has been leading the charge in that. You know, we're, we're industry based as well as tourism based. But for everything that's happening in Freeport right now, we're on the brink of a renaissance period. We have over 1.5 billion in new investments that are earmarked for Freeport, some of which are taking place, some of which are already completed, some of which are getting ready to start. But for everything that is happening, we never lost sight of the tech sector because tech and innovation is the way of the future. And so we want to make sure that we are prepared to take advantage of some of the emerging um, opportunities coming out of the tech and innovation sector. So it's important for us to ensure that we're upskilling the local population, getting them ready for the cultivation that we are doing in this particular area to bring new opportunities to Freeport. Because one of the challenges, and Ian would have mentioned this, that we've experienced, anytime we look at attracting a tech and innovation company, one of the challenges we have is local talent. How are we able to source from the local population in order to meet our needs. And for all of the um, opportunities that we have to offer, for all of the concessions that we offer, that sort of separates us from some of the other jurisdictions when you start talking about available talent that they can source from to meet their needs. And of course, after all of this is done, after the 12 weeks are completed and they would have you know, taken all of the skills and gained all of the skills from this, do you think that this will enhance the investment climate here on the island? Yes, it definitely would enhance the investment climate because we now become attractive. So when you look at our investor value proposition, what makes us attractive to a prospective investor? Well, we proximity, we have a no income tax or low income tax, tax favorable, we have free, free trade zone concessions in terms of duty-free imports, et cetera. All of that is great, but other jurisdictions offer the same thing. And now, by offering this upskilling program, we're developing and cultivating a self-replenishing labor pool that companies coming in can say, listen, they have a development plan for the future that we can source from and pull talent from. And I, I, I actually want to take it to Mr. Fricker now because with your market being in North America and mm -hmm. him speaking about all of these investors and those who find the, uh, our island and our country attractive now, how do you envision the Tech Edge program uh, contributing to the broader tech ecosystem, not only here in the country, but in the world? Well, you can look at it a couple of different ways. Right now in the United States, the unemployment rate nationally is 3.7%. But if you actually look at the unemployment rate within information technology, it's 2%, which basically means there's no labor supply. Because at any given moment, people are looking for jobs. But if you look at how quickly and how much need there is for skills to d develop applications, to build network systems, to protect those network systems, there just quite literally isn't enough talent to be able to meet that demand. So when you talk about something like nearshoring, what you're really talking about is building a domestic capability because technology is here right now. Uh, my understanding is about 90% of Bahamians actually carry smart devices. Those smart devices are, have capabilities that, if you look at it all around the world, how people are utilizing apps and how to make sure that they're utilizing those apps safely um, really becomes critical if you want to keep up the global economy. But I will add, in addition to the advantages that bah uh, Bahama has as it relates to proximity to the United States, um, don't take it for granted the soft skills, the communication skills, the understanding of the U.S. market. Um, that is actually incredibly attractive for organizations. So if you can find people that can do mobile application development or cybersecurity or 
work in the cloud and you have those communication skills, now you have increased the desirability because you're utilizing the natural resources of the islands, which are the people. So. Right, and of course the cohort, which will be 50 candidates, mm -hmm. once applied and accepted, once they're done gaining all of the necessary tools that they would or they should, mm -hmm. uh, what is next for them? I know that it doesn't stop there at the training. What right. is next? Actually, one of the things that happens, and it literally happens in the selection process, we are looking for not just people that have a certain aptitude in the cohorts that we're trying to build, but also have the commitments to actually see this training through, right? We want to make sure that if they start the training that they can complete the training, right? From day one, we're also thinking about how do we help this individual? They can be either a college student coming from UB that has only known the academic world, has never actually applied these skills in the, in the real world, or they can be completely changing industry. Maybe they work the hospitality industry and they're going, this in, uh, going into a completely new IT space. So working with the students around building their CVs, how to interview, how to present themselves to potential employers, in addition to working with companies that also want these skills. So we're not only upskilling students, we're also helping to play matchmaker and get them ready for that digital workforce as well. All right. Well, I just want to thank you guys. It certainly sounds like, you know, you are taking it to the next level, definitely giving the economy something to look forward to. And so I just, again, want to thank you guys for joining me. Find out how you can be a part of this tech program right after this break. Welcome to Freeport, the reawakened, the reimagined, the rebirth, the renaissance capital of the Bahamas. Over 1.5 billion in investment. Marinas. Cruise ports. Downtown revitalization. Residential developments. We're putting the city on the map. Want to know more? Just log on. Your future is only a click away. Let's keep it clean. Uh. Put it in the trash, my guy. Not on the ground, not on the beach, not in the bush, not in the street. No, yeah. Just put it in the trash, my guy. Not on the ground. Not on the beach, not in the bush, not on the streets. Just put it no. in the trash, my guy. Bombastic side eye. Criminal offensive side eye. Put it in the trash. Put it in the trash. That's it, that's it. Put it in the trash. Just put it in the trash. That's it, that's it. Just put it in the trash, my guy. Not on the ground, not on the beach, not in the bush, not in the street. Just put it no. in the trash, my guy. Yeah. Just put it in the trash, my guy. Yeah. We just gotta keep Grand Bahama clean. Welcome back to Tech Edge, a program that is set to not only enhance the economy, but also to enrich in the lives of those all who are involved. Now joining me is none other than Raquel Albury from the University of the Bahamas North. I also have with me Mr. Trevor Simmons. He is the Business Development Officer at the Grand Bahama Port Authority. And I also have Dr. Donovan Moxie, the CEO of Integrated Business Solutions International. Thank you guys so much for joining. Uh, I know that this is one of those programs that will change the lives of many. And Ms. Albury, for you who have been in education for some time now, heavily involved, how do you believe that Tech Edge will be a game changer for all of those who are in it? Well, the fact that Tech Edge is committed, just like the University of the Bahamas North is, we're committed to making sure that our students are fully developed and equipped in the area of computer information systems, IT, as well as entrepreneurship. This 
alignment is definitely um, one that can coexist for years to come to ensure that students not only uh, upon graduation or completion of the program, they would then have jobs, um, well equipped to be able to enter the job market. So we see that as advantageous to the local community also. And of course, you know, there are many persons that say, well, UB North isn't really doing anything. What do you guys have, have there that will contribute not only to the program, but also in the community? I know you have some other programs. Well, we have associate's degree programs as well as bachelor's degree pro programs in the area of business administration, IT, and education. You know, those are our main concentrated areas. Now, there are other areas such as nursing, where students can begin the program here in Grand Bahama and then transition to Oaksfield campus in New Providence. And now you have Tech Edge. How is the university feeling about having this particular program contributing to the lives of their students? Well, we're super excited about Tech Edge simply because it is a direct correlation with our UB Ignite program. So we see this as an opportunity to be able to partner not only with Quest and the Grand Mama Port Authority, but also with the wider community where we know that because we're transitioning into this technical space, wanting Grand Bahama to be this technical hub, we know that it's very important to make sure that our students are equipped to be able to be um, functioning in this community, tech community. And how did this partnership come about? I mean, I know that UB is heavily involved in the community, uh, but how did this particular partnership with Tech Edge come about? Well, with University of the Bahamas being the premier tertiary institution of the Bahamas, I'm pretty sure it was a no-brainer for the Grand Bahama Port Authority, as well as Quest, to select us. And what we've done was provide them with a database of students that have either been a part of the program to completion or did a certification program with us or transitioned out in the area of STEM or computer information systems. So we were able to provide them with that database with students that are still here locally or may have moved abroad to further their education and they're using that as, as the database to reach out to students for the first cohort. Are you excited to see students return home for programs like this? Definitely excited. You know, we often speak about the brain drain in Grand Bahama. So having an opportunity to bring students back home to Grand Bahama, we speak about the fact that we need to increase our local population. And I think this is an awesome opportunity for that to be able to happen. And the great part about it is working in the tech space, you can be remote. So, you know, we're attracting them to come back to the island and then they can stay here as well as get the international exposure or experience that, that's needed to be able to function efficiently in this, in this industry. Now, Dr. Moxie, Tech Edge sounds very edgy. What distinguishes the Tech Edge program from other technology initiatives, both locally and globally? Yes, great. So for us in the Tech Edge program, this program is actually one of the major components in the overall strategy to really build a technology sector here in Grand Bahama. And so when you think about building the technology sector, there are quite a number of um, uh, um, components that make that up and stakeholders. So one, you have the university environment where the training is done and the upskilling is done. And in many university environments, you have technologies that spin out. Then secondly, you have the government component, which provides a lot of the legislative framework around ease of doing business, around forming companies and things of that nature. And then of course you have the service providers. These are the financial services companies as well as the lawyers and the accountants that actually facilitate services for these companies. And then of course you have the investors or the tech companies that actually come to the area. So from our perspective, when you think about Tech Edge, it's all about upskilling behaviors and being able to match them with opportunities here in the Bahamas. And this is by attracting companies to come here and actually set up their nearshore operations which is a trend that's happening now in the world where you have a number of tech companies that want their workers closer to their customers. And given the proximity that Grand Bahama and the overall Bahamas has to North America, which is a very large market, we become a very ideal location for these technology companies uh, to set themselves up. And so when you think about what we're doing with Tech Edge, it's just not a program that offers a certificate or, um, or some sort of a certification after you leave, but what it does is it actually gets you ready 
for the job environment in the tech sector, which is why that relationship with Quest is so important for us as well. And of course, technology evolves day by day, right? And why do you think that it's necessary now to pour into this community in a technology way? Well, there's a couple of things. First of all, if you look at the infrastructure in Freeport, it was designed to uh, basically accommodate about five times the population that it has. Grand Bahama has really has a, already has a technology or manufacturing base in terms of the services it offers to companies that are here. So when you look at building a new industry, the question is, what's those industries that you can build very, very quickly with very little infrastructure investment? So if you think about the technology sector, particularly software investment, you really look at the fact that you need broadband, you need location. And so Grand Bahama, mainly Freeport, has all of that built in for you. Then you need an environment from a legislative framework perspective that really can attract companies here. So when you think about the benefits of the Hawksbill Creek Agreement, when you think about what the government has done with respect to the Commercial Enterprises Act, as well as the BH1B visa, it's really an opportunity now to grow this industry in a way that many around the world have grown their space. If you look at Ireland, what they've done is they've done it by, again, attracting the investors, attracting the talent, and then building that talent internally in order to meet those opportunities over time. So we're pretty much following that very same model. Uh, I myself came out of a tech sector, Research Triangle Park in North Carolina, started my first software company there, and I understand basically the ecosystem and what needs to be in place. And that's exactly what we're doing here in Grand Bahama. It takes time, but you have to lay that infrastructure and have the right partners to make it work. And speaking of time, what are the long-term goals and outcomes expected from the Tech Edge program? Great. So when you look at the students' performance, uh, if you will, we have a number of KPIs that we're tracking. First of all, we want to understand uh, competency level. Obviously, you come through a program, you measure increased competency and capacity. Second, we want to look at how it impacts those individuals uh, themselves. When you look at the increase in wages, when you look at their basically their happiness index or their satisfaction index, that increases as well. And then thirdly, you want to look at economic impact in terms of which of those students now decide to become tech entrepreneurs themselves, thereby really having a positive impact on the community. And then overall, when you think about us training these students, attracting technology companies here, you now have an increase in the population, but more importantly, you have an increase in the population that has a higher average salary than most. In the tech space, the average salary is between ninety six and about $110,000 a year. And so you can imagine if you bring in several thousand people that are actually earning that, the impact that it will have on the community here in Freeport as well as Grand Bahama overall. Sounds like a program I need to sign up for. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of, speaking of signing up for it, Trevor, how can persons sign up for this incredible program? Great question. And I want everybody to head over to techedgebahamas.com right now. Um, that page has all of the information in relation to the program. That's also where you go to apply for the program. Um, there are going to be three tracks. It's going to be cybersecurity, cloud computing, and mobile app development. Um, as mentioned, there will be 50 persons in this first cohort. Um, the requirements, you just have to be a Bahamian over the age of 18 with a high school diploma. Now, if you have a technical degree or background or some experience, that works great for in your favor as well, but it's not limited to those persons. Anybody with the aptitude and attitude to want to learn, we encourage you to come and apply for the program. You almost took me back to the, <laughs> the quote, your uh, aptitude, not your uh, attitude, but determine your altitude. So definitely some good stuff. But are there any plans to expand the program's capacity in the future? I know that there's only 50 slots mm -hmm. in, that, uh, in this first cohort, but is there any plans? Oh, most definitely. So this is just the first cohort. The plan is to actually have multiple cohorts per year. Um, if you speak to Daniel from Quest, he has, you know, queries almost every day from his clients looking for talent. So the demand is there. It's up to us to make sure that we can supply that demand. So we do plan on having multiple cohorts per year. Um, and, you know, any corporate partners who want to come on board with us to partner with this program, we invite them as well because when we have more resources, we could then increase that capacity as well. So, you know, we can go up from 50 per cohort, but we are going to have multiple cohorts per year. Sounds good, sounds good. But I want to go back to you, Dr. Moxie, and I want you to tell me what message should be conveyed to the community, to the port stakeholders, and potential partners about the significance of this program. This is a big deal. Yes, yes it is. I think what's important here, and many people would have heard several years ago about building the third pillar of the economy or the tech sector. 
Well, with the message that should be put forth to the port and everybody here in the Bahamas is that the Grand Bahama Port Authority is serious about it. They've invested a lot in this program. We've brought a lot of partners, world-class partners to the table. And so we're serious about building this. We understand that certain infrastructure needs to be in place, and we have to make sure that the Bahamians are also ready to take on these positions as well, which is why, in addition to the tech training program, we're also putting together a STEM professional um, uh, database or portal where any Bahamian anywhere in the world working in the tech sector has the opportunity to essentially upload their credentials uh, and basically make themselves available for these opportunities that are emerging here with the relationships that we have. And so we have the opportunity now to reverse that brain drain and more importantly attract those people here to Freeport, pay them the tech wages that they're used to, have them literally working here for international companies or companies with international focus, thereby building and growing the sector. So when we think about this, we're thinking about this as a holistic strategic approach to really building a tech sector here in Grand Bahama. And also expanding on the, the economy and, and pouring into the economy, right? That's exactly right. I think I a know. lot of that comes with, because when you look at the ancillary benefits, people who come here to work, first of all, they have a high average salary. They need a place to stay. They need transportation. They need food. They need entertainment. All of those things then spin off into the economy and has a multiplicity effect. And again, for us, we're just not trying to put together a program where you leave with a certificate and a handshake. It's really having you now walk into opportunities that are here local in the Bahamas with companies that we're either attracting here or with companies that can be started based on uh, technology entrepreneurs. And also the remote part of it, that is the most interesting part because a lot of persons think, okay, I, I can't make money from this because I would have to move away. I want to stay home, not realizing that they can work remotely thanks to technology. Yes, that's exactly right. In fact, um, I heard a, a statistic the other day where when COVID happened, most people moved away from their office space. And they're saying now about 30 to 40 percent of these persons will never return back to the office on a full time basis. And a lot of them work in different, live in different cities that they work in. Well, the same thing can happen here in the Bahamas. And so one of the things we hear about nearshoring, well, the benefit is of our proximity to the United States. So what's happening now is that clients within the U.S., they want to have access to their talent very quickly. But if you're 12, 14 hours away by plane, that's very tough for you to do that on a regular basis. But if you're sitting here in Freeport, Grand Bahama, that has access and gateways to the U.S. directly or in the Bahamas in general, then that's very easy for you to get to your clients in a very timely fashion, fashion as well. And, of course, the pandemic was both a curse and a blessing That's because exactly now right. we see uh, what is emerging from that. And uh, it's, a, it's amazing to see how far we've come in just two to three years. Uh, correct, correct. But I want to thank all of you for joining me uh, and giving insight and diving deeper into what Tech Edge is all about and how it can pour into not only the community, but also the economy. It is truly a remarkable initiative to reshape the economic landscape of Grand Bahama and the Bahamas as a whole. Hopefully soon, Grand Bahama will be the uh, Silicon Valley of the region. Amazing work, amazing work. Well, on behalf of the entire technical team, I'm Azure Quant. Thank you for tuning in.